Steve here from JTM, long time no speak. But back here with a uh, Grand Seiko, this one, a uh, Japanese domestic market model, SLGA017, part of the Evolution 9 collection. Now, when I first heard of the Evolution 9 collection back when it launched in around 2019, it confused me a little bit. I didn't really understand what Evolution 9 meant. So in today's video, we're going to take a little bit of a deep historical dive and find out what exactly this watch has evolved from and maybe, you know, what it means for Grand Seiko moving forward in the future. So let's get stuck in. The concept of Seiko style was developed by design graduate Tado Tanaka in the mid 1960s. This grammar of design ran as follows. Double indices at 12 o'clock, single multifaceted indices around the face of the dial, a curved case side, a crown halfway inset, dauphine hands highly polished, mirror finishing on the bezel and the case, and a flat dial. The end result was this, the 44GS, released in 1967. Famous for its angular lines and polyhedron lugs, the watch was designed so that the highly polished surfaces would catch and reflect light to attract potential customers when displayed at a watch shop. Some 50 years later, and Kiyotaka Sakai is put in charge of designing what would later come to be named the Evolution 9 collection. He goes back to Tanaka's original Seiko style for inspiration, but aims to refine and modernize some aspects and also add some new elements to make a design language with a total of nine concepts, hence the name Evolution 9. In particular, he focused on three principles of aesthetics, legibility, and comfort. So let's take a look at each one of these individually and see how they compare with the original. The case finishing on a GS is always the highlight, and this is no exception. Zaratsu Miru polish is applied more sparingly in favor of a satin hairline finish on the case sides and the top of the bezel. This gives the curves a little bit more contrast and a little less bling. To increase legibility, Grand Seiko has doubled up on the hour markers with twin batons circulating around the dial. 12 o'clock is also given a triple baton shape and that is something that you will only find on the Evolution 9 collection. Likewise, the handset is something restricted only to these models. And personally, I really enjoy that truncated hour hand split through the center of it. Reminds me a little bit of the energy sword from Halo 2. With a 40 millimeter case diameter, and 11.9mm uh, thickness, this does have a fair bit of wrist presence. It isn't going to slide under the cuff quite so easily as the 44GS, but it does sit pretty nicely on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist. The Tanaka designed 44GS is as close to perfection as any watch I've handled. It executes flawlessly on every single design aspect and 55 plus years later, there's still almost nothing I would change about it. The Evo 9 collection attempts to modernize the style that Tanaka introduced, and I think overall, Grand Seiko did an amazing job. Would I like a thinner case? Well, yeah, sure. Some loom on the indices would also be nice, but overall, you get the feeling that GS is quite comfortable in this space. 
blurring the lines between a dress and sports watch, drawing from nature and heritage for inspiration, and setting new standards for accuracy with its spring drive movement. Feel free to let me know what you think of this watch in the comments below, and be sure to check out my account on Instagram, at JTM Watches. That's it for this video. Hope to catch you soon in the next one. Take care.